We're living in a weird, dystopian future, and it's crazy. People like to say the future is now, and yeah, it is now, but now is insane. Okay, let's dial it back a little. I'm getting excited. I'm gonna reframe this. So, okay, lots of people want to be actors, right? And it's a very tough field to get into, you know, very competitive. There are hundreds of thousands of people, if not millions of people around the world, who dream of being cast in a movie or a TV show. Well, if that wasn't enough competition, now it seems like people People don't even have to be alive to be cast in movies, so if you're looking to break into the industry, just keep in mind that now you might lose a role to someone who can't even cash the paycheck because they are no longer with us, which makes it tricky to do banking. Most bank tellers, when a ghost comes in, they don't let them cash checks because they're not able to pick up that little pen on a chain thing. They don't have physical bodies. Having deceased actors digitally recreated to appear in movies has been a subject of conversation for a couple of years already, but now it's kicked into a whole new gear, which I'll get to in a minute, and it's absolutely nuts. The use of actors who are no longer with us in Rogue One, a Star Wars story, definitely was a point of discussion when it came out in 2016. There was a digital recreation of a young Carrie Fisher, but she passed away a couple of weeks after the movie came out, so I'm not actually talking about that. But that movie had Peter Cushing as Grand Moff Tarkin, and he played a pretty big role in the movie. But Peter Cushing passed away 22 years years earlier in 1994, so that was a CGI recreation of his face pasted on the body of an actor named Guy Henry. And this guy bore some physical resemblance to Peter Cushing, and he could do his voice really good. And that's cool, but also a, a little weird, if I can say that. You're crazy. John Knoll, who was the visual effects supervisor on Rogue One, spoke about the decision to do this, and he said, quote, We weren't doing anything that I think Peter Cushing would have objected to. I think this work was done with a great deal of affection and care. And I think the key word here in both those sentences is think. By definition of, you know, how human life works, you can't know for a fact that he would have been okay with it. And sure, they consulted with and cooperated with Peter Cushing's estate. And they said they wouldn't have done it if the estate had objected or if they didn't feel comfortable with the idea. Now it's good that they did that for sure. But they also can't say with absolute certainty that Peter Cushing would have wanted to do it. They probably had the best idea of that than anyone else on the planet, but still, they can't say for sure because he's not alive. If Peter Cushing hadn't passed away in 1994, if he had lived to see the Star Wars prequels, maybe he would have absolutely hated those and decided he wanted nothing to do with Star Wars ever again. But we have no way of knowing that because he's not alive, and that's kind of the point. And by the way, George Lucas kind of put him in the Star Wars prequels too. He had a little cameo at the end of Revenge of the Sith, only instead of CGI, it was a dude in heavy prosthetics to kind of look like him a little bit. Now there's an argument to be made that cases like this aren't so bad because it's a character that the actor has played before. Kind of in the same vein as how they finished Paul Walker's Furious 7 scenes with the use of CGI. Although in that case, he clearly wanted to be in that movie. He was shooting it when he passed away. But okay, recently something was announced that uh, I don't know, I feel like it's not okay. See, it was recently announced that James Dean, the iconic actor who passed away at the age of 24 back in 1955, had been cast in an upcoming movie called Finding Jack. Finding Jack is a movie that James Dean has never had anything to do with. It's based on a book published in 2008, which he wasn't alive for. The book takes place during the Vietnam War, which he wasn't alive for. So this isn't like a continuation of anything James Dean has done. It's not a grand Moff Tarkin situation. It's not a Paul Walker situation. It's not a anything situation. And he's also not playing himself. You know, maybe it could have been possible that the main character of this thing has hallucinations of James Dean talking to him or something like that, but no. It's not a flashback scene where a character interacts with him. It's not, uh, it's nothing like that. You know, Quentin Tarantino had Bruce Lee be a character in his movie, Once Upon a Time in Hollywood, and that was, you know, maybe a little questionable, but not insane. In this case, though, this is straight up James Dean being cast to play a secondary character in this Vietnam War movie. He plays a guy named Rogan. What is happening? Here's what one of the movie's directors, Anton Ernst, had to say about the casting, although can you even call it casting? I don't know, he seems to think so, but here's what he said. We searched high and low for the perfect character to portray the role of Rogan, which has some extreme complex character arcs, and after months of research, we decided on James Dean. 
Now on the one hand, it's really inspirational that James Dean has overcome the obstacle of being dead for 64 years and managed to book this gig. It can be hard for deceased people to find work and I respect that, but on the other hand, what are you talking about? You can't just do that. What if Marvel came out tomorrow like, guys, we searched far and wide for an actor to take over the role of Wolverine and we've settled on Marlon Brando. This, we're really excited about this. We think he's gonna be great. Yeah, we know he died in 2004, but he was a really good actor and we want him. I don't think people would be like, oh, okay, yeah, cool, Marlon Brando. I think they'd be like, you can't do that. These guys are like, James Dean was such a good actor that we should get an actor to come in and perform the role and then we could CGI James Dean's face onto that performance. Doesn't that sound, doesn't that sound good? It's like, just use that guy who's standing in for James Dean. What are you doing? Obviously, this announcement was met with a ton of backlash. Chris Evans tweeted, I'm sure he'd be thrilled, eyes rolling emoji. This is awful. Maybe we can get a computer to paint us a new Picasso or write a couple of new John Lennon tunes. The complete lack of understanding here is shameful. Elijah Wood was a little more straightforward. He just tweeted out, nope, this shouldn't be a thing. And also Zelda Williams, who's the daughter of the late great Robin Williams said this, I have talked to friends about this for years and no one believed me that the industry would stoop this low once tech got better. Publicity stunt or not, this is puppeteering the dead for their clout alone and it's sets such an awful precedent for the future of performance. That's a pretty powerful sentiment coming from someone who's actually the daughter of a deceased famous person that some dude in Hollywood might actually consider bringing back for a movie at some point in the future. I mean, you hope that that idea wasn't floated when they started remaking Aladdin. I hope they just went directly to Will Smith and never even thought about that. Now, the director Anton Ernst was somehow shocked that there was backlash to this announcement. He thought people were gonna be jazzed about it. In response to the backlash, he said this, it's not a gimmick. He's the right guy for the role. He's just unfortunately no longer with us. Uh, I mean, I just wanna, let's maybe just pause and sit with that sentence for a second. Like take, let's take a breath. Cause actually there's an even crazier quote coming up. So, okay. Okay, you ready for another crazy sentence? Cause it's coming up soon, you're gonna hate it a lot. So the film has the support of James Dean's family, right? And I mean, I don't know them, but I still personally feel like it's strange to be so confident that a 24 year old who passed away 64 years ago would wanna do this movie, but that's not the point. To get the rights to use James Dean's likeness in this movie, production had to go through CMG Worldwide. They're an agency that represents Dean's family in addition to many other deceased celebrities. So Somebody's gotta manage celebrity estates. Okay, cool, sure. So, here's what Mark Rosler, the CEO of CMG Worldwide, said about this movie. He said that it, quote, opens up a whole new opportunity for many of our clients who are no longer with us. You kidding me? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? I mean, do, did, did, did you like that sentence? I didn't like that sentence at all. Now, CMG Worldwide represents more than 1,700 personalities. That includes Christopher Reeve, if they decide they want to do another Superman movie with him, Burt Reynolds, Ingrid Bergman, Jack Lemmon, Neil Armstrong. Oh, hey, Damien Chazelle could have made the movie First Man with Neil Armstrong instead of Ryan Gosling. Man, I bet he wishes he had thought of that. And man, actually, I'm only sadly half joking on that because Ernst also said this. He said, quote, our partners in South Africa are very excited about this as this technology would also be employed down the line to recreate historical icons such as Nelson Mandela to tell stories of cultural heritage significance. So a uh, Nelson Mandela biopic starring Nelson Mandela hitting theaters in what, 2022, 2023? Yeah, okay, yeah, cool. Or hey, maybe they can just take the movie Mandela Long Walk to Freedom and paste his face over Idris Elba's face. That's a good way to go about it. Look, filmmaking technology is getting really, really amazing and it's now possible to make a nearly perfect recreation of a human being and even the tech to recreate their voices is getting pretty great. Stuff like this James Dean casting thing might keep happening unless people get vocal about how it crosses a line. And I don't know, maybe I'm overreacting, but this all feels really, really off. It makes you wonder how much entertainers are gonna be asked to sign away of themselves when they agree to do a project. This is something that Donald Glover actually brought up in an interview with The New Yorker. He said, quote, I'm scanned into Star Wars now, my face and body. Who's to say that at some 
some point, they won't take that scan and say, let's make another movie with Donald. He's been dead for 15 years, but we can do whatever we want with him. Uh, anyway, thanks for watching that video, guys. I hope you enjoyed it. What's your take on all this? Do you think it's okay for studios to start casting deceased actors in roles they never actually agreed to play? That's a weird question I never thought I'd ask, but l l let me know your thoughts. Also, if you feel like it, you can hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. And as always, check back soon for a new video. Bye-bye.